records this. So welcome back. And I just, since, since you all said you wanted to start with number five, we'll just kind of like um, walk through this really quickly. So, so, um, and let's see, yeah, we've got the same problem um, for this going, going through. So um, we can see our demand and, and how are you doing this morning, Brian? I haven't heard anything from you. Uh, I'm doing good. How are you? Okay, good. Good. Okay. I'm I'm fine. My my coffee is right at my side. So okay. So um so we see our our uh, demand curve and the marginal costs for each of the firms in this duopoly. And note that they have different fixed costs, so that's going to affect their profits. And so um. The first one says, what will be the quantity of output in the duopoly in total, right? I'm going to assume this is this is right. Um, but I showed it to you all. So um, bear in mind, since we're going to try to start with number five, what the value oh, is. Just one yeah. quick question. Yeah. So you say that it might be right. So like the answer that Ethereum differs could be wrong. Oh, no, right. no, I, no, I'm, I, 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 this is right. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm always a, a little bit of a skeptic, huh? Um, and so it just kind of makes its way into my um, mouth. You know, if I don't actually work it out myself, I don't trust anything, but, um, but no, this this should be the right answer. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> you know, um, it, it, yeah. Uh, so I, I I've used this program for a while, and every time I think that I found something that was a mistake, it turns out it was my math, my own math error. So it's 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 yeah, it's it's right. So anyway. But we, but we want to still check this on our way um, to doing number five. Okay, so, and for this one, um, what price will prevail, prevail on the duopoly? And so, so you all can, can write these down. Um, so our, our total Q is 12.1 and um, the, the price is gonna be 64.4. And the quantity for firm one in the duopoly is going to be 4.95. And well, firm two will have the other bit of that total that we saw, you know, 7.515. <clears throat> and then how much profit will firm two earn um, in the duopoly? So I actually think that this 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 one's um, pretty easy, um, but let's work on it. Okay, and if if you all are are, are comfortable with the 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 stuff that's numbers one through four, we don't have to go ahead and work through all the reaction functions and everything like that. So let me. Uh, stop sharing this and share the whiteboard. Okay. So it's 8 a.m. I'll let you all work on this for just a couple of minutes. Okay. And, um, but I, I think you guys, I can kind of remind you. 
right? We had um, the industry quantity, we said it was 12.1, if I remember. The industry price we had as 64.4. So, and then for Q1 and Q2, So four point nine five and seven point one five. Okay. So do you all have any questions or anything or you ready to go? Mm -hmm. This was your question, right, right, Andrew? Yes. Okay, okay. So I'll give you a minute, minute to work on it, okay? When you guys get done with it, go ahead and just raise your hand. Okay, I was kind of waiting for you, Andrew. Are you, would you want to <laughs> tell me um, what's, what's your struggle? Um, <clears throat> I was about to say coming up with graph, <laughs> but. Um, uh, yeah, but, but not in this case, there is no graph, yeah. right? Pro profit, right, is total revenue minus total cost, right? Yes. And so that's, I mean, I know you can't be completely um, seized up when you see an equation because you've had to work with a lot of other equations. So, for firm one, right, this is just the, the PFT for firm one is going to be, right, the total revenue. And actually, I, I hate writing this like that. So I'm just going to put revenue. It, if, if, if I say revenue, you know I mean total revenue. I, I don't know why we say total revenue. I mean, in accounting, they might talk about like <clears throat> um, like net revenue versus gross revenue or some weird stuff like that, but we don't do that here. Um, <clears throat> so um, are, are you good or are you still struggling? Um, <clears throat> what was the answer for this one? I didn't give you the answer yet. Oh, um, <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so okay <sighs> okay so so there is no fixed cost in you know in uh 
just a profit is there a fixed cost you, you said there wasn't right no 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 for so for, for producer surplus there isn't so profit right so you know total cost here it, it total cost is variable cost plus fixed cost so of course it's included Okay. Okay, I don't know if this is right, but I got three forty six point sixteen. Okay, so do you want to walk us through the steps? How do you calculate your total revenue? Um, I just literally did well because well, um, it's only asking for firm two. Um, oh, it's firm two. Sorry, I yeah, you're right. I should do PFP two. Okay. So first is right the revenue for firm two, which is what. Uh, the price times uh, 7.15. Yeah. So I'll just put times Q2. And what did you get for that? Uh, 64.4. Oh, no, 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 well, no. Uh, 779.24. Uh, 779.24. And did you get the same thing, Brian, Hung, for revenue? Uh, I got 460.46. Oh, okay. But yeah, did you I, so I, I, 60, oh yeah yeah oh no no yeah four sixty point forty six yeah 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 sorry okay uh, I was I was still comparing the P one and P uh, Q one and Q two um <laughs> so that, is that right now yeah. does everybody yes. agree yeah okay okay and now we have the cost uh it's uh hundred fourteen point three okay. And you want to explain that because there should be a the tricky part is the variable cost portion, right? Because the fixed costs are given. So let's do the variable cost. How do you calculate that? It is. Um, well, you can describe it to me. So, 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 um, so it's a uh, like marginal cost. Yeah. Time. What? Um, well, you, you, uh, you know, calculus, economy? right? You know, calculus. Yes. It's the integral of the marginal cost function. Um, and the range of the integral is from zero to Q2. Are you there? Yes, yeah, so it would be to say it, no, no, no. Three, three over two. <laughs> yeah. Um, Q squared or seven yeah. point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So 176.68. Uh, 176.68. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, um, oh, no, no, no. Only the variable cost is uh, 76.68. 76.68. And is that what you got, Brian and Hung, too? Uh, yeah, but I did it by yes. doing a small graph. Yeah, you. I mean, the definition of the integral is the area below the line <laughs> so you could just like what i i showed you guys is you just draw a little triangle right and and you calculate the area of the triangle is that what you did brian yeah that's what i saw in one of your videos that i was watching in the weekend yeah so that's that's super simple okay so um and then you have the fixed cost 
which are given as 100. So drum roll, you have profit and um, I'm gonna, Go ahead and is that right? Yes. And the only thing that's missing, I mean, you don't ever put this in the Ethereum, but you know, all the units here are dollars, right? So I'll just okay. So that was five. Now, um, six. Is so let me see if I can. So this is number. Five and six is that okay. um, professor? Yeah. Oh, I, <laughs> um, actually, um, uh, well, no, 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 like nothing you did was wrong, but actually, I think I was trying to compare the graph uh, that I saw on one of the videos. Um, it, it was kind of like, kind of like the utility question, where like you know there were two bottom curves. Um, not the monopoly one where like, um, it's like a V, but it was kind of like a, um, you know, starting from the same point <laughs> and, um, remember the, utility well, uh, 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 oh, okay. Well, I'll tell yeah. you what, so I can answer questions here, but I can't answer questions about what you saw in a video that <laughs> you didn't watch <laughs> together. So, so, um, but, um, fair game right we do have office hours on on uh friday right yeah and, and at 9 a.m and um except for this friday so we're kind of running out of time but if you wanted to make an appointment and or you know maybe it would be appropriate because next week is we're getting like the week before finals um to have an extra office hour um then you could like queue up the video to the section you were talking about and we could watch it together and then i could say like oh this is what i meant by that or that or that right yes, so yes. so so you know but here we're just going to focus on doing our practice questions for yes. the homework because that's you know what this you know segment is dedicated to so um but because I, I have no idea um, what graph you're talking about, <laughs> you know, so, so, but I'm more than happy to go through that in office hours um, and explain if it would, you know, it's something you're curious about and it would help you, um, but you got to, you know, come to office hours. And, and right. we can do, and and like I said, and queue it up because then I'll yes. make you a co-host and we'll look at it together, and then we'll figure it out. So, so um, do do you all want to do number six, or do you want to move on to something else? Um, because number six, I think, is pretty easy at this point. Um, again, the only thing that you have to remember is that um, producer surplus, another way of saying the same thing I said before, is producer surplus is profit plus fixed costs. You add back in the fixed costs. Um, producer surplus is always greater than uh, profit. And it, 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 I don't know if that's clear or if anybody has a question about that. No. Okay. So do you, do you all want to work on number six or you want to skip it and go on to number seven? Other people said they had trouble with eight, nine, 10, 11, whatever. So 
we could pick. Uh, I'm I'm good. Uh, um, yeah, five. I was having troubles with five through uh, trouble with five through seven, and mm-hmm. I think the last three. But right I, right now, <laughs> I'm good. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay, so so didn't you say hung at, like you had trouble with eight or no or what was the? Oh yeah. Okay, so we have we have seven. Um, so seven is a little bit more difficult and i'll just put it up here um but hopefully you all um uh and i don't know if, if there's something that you had burning in your mind brian but i, I we you, you can suggest a question too so uh, i was just gonna say if you could post the the answer for number six so i could check it later oh yeah sure thank you sure so Okay. I'm trying to create enough space for everything on the the whiteboard. So if if, if there's something that you all can't see, let me know. Um, there's the. Can you see it down at the bottom, Brian? Yeah. Number six hint. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, so, so number seven is an application of the first fundamental welfare theorem. And um, I'll just, you know, quickly put in here um, that, that you have to calculate it is the, the change in total surplus. And remember, that um, dead weight loss is the absolute value of the change in total surplus. And so what you do is you end up with the total surplus, in this case, under duopoly, I'll just put D-U-O, minus the total surplus under competition. And that's what you're calculating. Okay. Um, the, the, the total surplus under competition, you all know, but again, it's one of those things that you're gonna have to calculate because remember you have to um, aggregate um, the marginal cost functions because the marginal cost functions, remember, those are the supply functions um, for the firms. So you add up to get the industry supply and then you calculate um, the total surplus in our competition. And you know from the first fundamental welfare theorem, that's why I say this application of the first fundamental welfare theorem, you know that that this number is going to be bigger. So you didn't have the, the, the reason why the absolute value needs to be there is because otherwise you end up with a negative number, right? And dead weight loss is impliedly uh, a positive number. Okay. Any questions about that one? Okay. So, so um, the, the number, once we get to number eight, and I'll go ahead and I'll give you all um, the hint for number seven, two, down here at the bottom, Brian, in case you wanna um, calculate it later, okay? But, um, so, so the next one, it's the exact same problem, but they're asking about leader follower, which is something I would cover in the lecture today. Um, but um, I can talk about it a, a little bit first. We only have about 10 minutes left, so it's just kind of a preview. And that that is that 
So you, you go through the same process you do for Corneau, but in this um, particular question, firm one is designated as the leader, okay? So, so what does that affect? Well, um, when you're calculating the um, profit maximizing solution for firm one, when firm one is, is um, setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, they use the following formula, right? Um, that, and I'll put it here. Um, and actually, I'm going to leave this one. as orange so it matches and do this in pink okay so the 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 real issue is the leader's marginal revenue okay and you know that again using your definitions marginal revenue is equal to the change in total revenue over the change in the quantity, in this case, a firm one, right? So the, the difference is that, remember when we're calculating um, these things, we have the, the total revenue for firm one, right? Is gonna be um, the price of the product, but now the price of the product is a function of um, both the quantity that firm one produces and the quantity that firm two produces. And I won't be more explicit than that right now. Okay. But, um, sorry. Two. But remember from the reaction function for Q2, um, Q2 is now a function of Q1. And so what we do in constructing the marginal revenue of the leader is we substitute in the reaction function for um, the follower. But in this case, it's it's firm two. And, and then I, I should put here, it's price times quantity, okay? And we do this because being the leader, right? And you have to kind of know a little bit about if you listen to the videos and the rest of it, what the um, reaction function tells you. But the reaction function says in a duopoly, if one of the firms, firm one, produces a certain amount, it tells you as a reaction to that, how much the other firm will produce. And by definition, the leader gets to move first. And so if the leader has knowledge of the reaction function of the follower, then they know what industry output will be once they choose their quantity because they know what um, the follower's reaction will be in terms of output. And there's another way of thinking about it and so one is I'm the leader. I know what the follower would do. I pick my quantity and I know the leader and then the follower will pick whatever quantity. But another way of thinking about it is it's, it, it's, there's a game of asymmetric information that the leader knows something that the follower doesn't. And what that is, is that they know how the, the, the follower will respond. Um, 
so um, the the reaction function um, for the follower is just constructed the way that you can construct the reaction function for the follower for the duopoly problem. So I, I could put um, here um, from, well, I'll just put Corno because that's a little bit, it's the Corno reaction function. Um, constructed in the case in this case in a duopoly but i don't know if that helps or not um, but then once you have the 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 revenue function properly formulated then um, you go ahead and just take your derivative and get the marginal revenue set it equal to the marginal cost um, and so i could just put down here you know, at the at the end of the day, um, then you set the marginal revenue for firm one equal to the marginal cost for firm one, and that's going to get you the Q1 star, their profit maximizing level of output. So um, stay tuned because we can talk about this more in the main lecture but does that does that help i don't know if you all are feeling good or like so so under a monopoly um it would be whoever has the lowest marginal cost uh with the you know the intercept uh term but for a steckelberg or a corno the first firm one and firm two is just like literally in that respective order right well, yeah, I mean, and I, I'm pretty sure that, and so you noticed something that, that I think is, is important and, and I'll point it out just to make sure that. Um, well, know, I, 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 said I, meant leader, I meant leader followers. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But Stackelberg is leader follower. So that's fine. That's just another name for it. Stackelberg is the guy that did this first. But leader follower is I, I hate actually to be honest with you all of the stuff like Corno and Stackelberg and Nash because it's just the names of people, right? It could be um, you know the Lee function, the Lamb function, the Yao process, and the um, Madrid Andrade, right? Like we don't know. I mean, it's just names, right? But if you say leader follower. I think it's better because it reminds you of what it's supposed to relate to, right? A real world situation, not somebody's name, but we're stuck with names. So uh, we got to get used to it. Um, but anyway, what I was going to say is, I think what you're pointing out is that in these setups, the leader is always firm one and the follower is always firm two, but sometimes the the leader has a higher marginal cost than the follower. And sometimes it's the other way around. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's the point you were making exactly, but that's, that can happen. Is that, is that what you were talking about, Andrew? Yes, yes. Yeah. And again, one of the things I'll tell you, because I'm not trying to hide the ball, um, um, but you will see a monopoly problem um, on the final, right? Um, or if you see a monopoly problem on the final, it will be a monopoly problem that has marginal cost functions that look like these, okay? And in which case you can't compare intercepts. Do you see what I'm saying, Andrew? Um, yes. Right. So, so <laughs> act, uh, go ahead. No, no, in that case, wouldn't it just mean like only one is producing as? No, as this, you know? no. Because remember the joint marginal cost function 
um, when you have a zero intercept, it's, it's uh, both firms will always produce some amount of output. Yes. So because they both start at the origin, they both start at zero. So it would never make sense to give all of the output to one of the firms. In fact, when you don't have the intercept term, you can't really intelligently use the language low cost firm. You could say mm -hmm. firm two is, has a lower marginal cost. That's true, but it only has a, a, a lower marginal cost in some sort of global sense because it, 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 you know, you have to compare costs on the margin on a unit by unit basis. So if, for example, you know, firm two is producing three units, then the marginal cost would be three times three is nine. And if firm one is producing only one unit, seven times one is seven. So the cost on the margin for firm one producing fewer units are less than the marginal cost for firm two producing more units, right? Yes. So, so you know, when there's an intercept involved, it's easier to identify or speak in a meaningful way, kind of about low cost, high cost. But even there, things get a little bit confusing because it still depends upon how many units each one is producing. And, and you know, the costs on the margin have to do with, given you're producing a certain amount, how much additional cost do you incur for producing a little bit more? And if the production levels are different, then you gotta be careful, right? Um, in the same way that I just mentioned here in comparing marginal cost of firm one and marginal cost of firm two. But, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, stop sharing for a minute and um, 